I have a win streak on Nurse of 563 games in a row. But Nurse got nerfed very recently, and something very big changed. One of the key perks of my build, Starstruck, was now completely useless. As well as that, Nurse's add-ons were changed a lot, and what I was using mainly for the streak, a mixture of recharge and range add-ons, were both completely non-existent. So in order to keep the streak alive, we had to find new add-ons and a new build that doesn't feature Starstruck, but is still extremely powerful. This streak has been active since May of 2022. So I put a ton of thought and time into it and I present to you the new streak build. Yeah, I, I literally changed one perk. <laughs> we took out Starstruck for Lethal Pursuer to let us get that early pressure. And then after that, it is purely a game of snowballing. Pain Resonance to damage the highest progress gen. Floods of Rage to let us get a free hit when they unhook and an extra two seconds from Lethal Pursuer. Agitation to make sure we consistently get those Scourge hooks. And then the two new add-ons, Campbell's Last Breath, which allows us to blink 40 meters in any direction that we want to at any point. And Heavy Panting, which lets us lunge 30% further. The key thing about this build is getting fast downs, playing aggressive, and snowballing through the Floods of Rage and the Pain Resonance. Lethal Pursuer just allowing you to start quickly gets you into that snow even faster and that is why this build thrives as much as it does but also floods of rage and pain resonance helps you out massively on the harder maps to play for nurse and in this video that's what i want to showcase so without any more delay let's get into some games on some of the hardest maps for nurse using the new win streak build Okay, so we're in on larry's which is either the hardest or the second hardest nurse map Depending on who you believe, it's between Larry's and RPD for sure, though. I think there's absolutely no debate there. And I basically just want to show you what's the most important thing with the streak build is consistency and how good the build is in all situations. So obviously, if you want to go on a high streak, you need a build which is going to be good on even the worst maps for the killer. So I just want to show you the strength. What? Uh, 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 oh my god, I don't even know what just happened. The strength of this build even on one of Nurse's worst maps. Not that hard. Okay, perfect. And then the most important thing after getting that first down is just making sure that you're constantly hooking on Scourges. Check over here. I don't think anyone's on this gen, but you can just see the map pressure that you get off of literally one, well, two blinks, but just extremely fast travel. I actually can't really see any auras, but that's okay. I think we actually hit through Sprint Burst there just because of how good Campbell's is. She must have held W, right? Yeah. Perfect. And she died right next to a Scourge Hook again. Perfect. Like, that literally couldn't be any better. Express delivered herself. Pain Residence onto a gen and just setting the back even further. Larry's is a bit of a weird map. It sort of has two sides to the gen spawns. So you've got to make an early decision on where you want to play. And that's normally just based off wherever your first down is. Like, for me to come all the way down here is a bit of a waste of time. I think it's okay because we got decent early pressure. But if the down took a little bit longer, there's no way I'd be traveling to this side. Hello, Jane. I think this Jane's a distortion player. Are you committing to this? There's... I mean, that's close, but like, you're never committing to that, I don't think. Okay, and this is another thing with this build. If you are going to go and try it yourself, you need to realize really quickly where all of your scourges are. And on the maps that have like two sides that you play, like Larry's, I've quickly noticed, okay, all of my scourges are on this side. So there's no argument now. I cannot play that other side of the map. Because the most important thing is that I'm getting Scourge Hooks. If I'm chasing there, I'm not going to get one. Kayla's right here. I think she has Sprint Burst, right? Pretty sure she did earlier. And that would make sense why she was standing still. Maybe not, you know. She didn't make too much distance. That's fine, though. We're going to get another pretty fast down. And there you go. That should be two gens on the other side of the map. It is beautiful. So you can see it's, like, heavily cutting off a section of the map. So the only gens I care about are this one here, this one, this one, and this one. That gen over there, there's just no point extending to defend it. Like, that's a typical rule for killer in general. You want to play, like, an, a good area of the map. But even so, that we have no Scourge Hooks. Because as soon as I stop playing Scourge Hooks with this build, I am throwing away pretty much every single puck. Lethal Pursuer would be useless because the start is already gone. Floods of Rage isn't happening. Pain Resonance isn't happening. And Agitation, I guess you could argue. You could get to a nice hook if it's close to a gen or something. But that's the only thing you're getting value out of. Yeah, I saw the Survivor sneak up on Floods. Where they are exactly, though, I don't know. Right there. Okay, that's why I love Floods of Rage. And we should actually be able to get an entire Floods down. No! 
Oh, there was just, like, debris in the hall. Yeah, I'm not even gonna get a Scourge Hook if I commit down here and get the down, so I think it's kind of pointless. I'll just check this gen quickly. I don't hear anything at all, and then we can just get back down here. No worries. The only gen they should be on is this one, because they were hooked right next to it. Oh, that's really close. I don't like that. I'm actually gonna take time to damage that, just because an extra 10% less on the progression might be what saves us there from that gen getting popped. That gen's regressed with Pain Resonance. We're just going to hit it a little bit harder. This actually does have a little bit of progression. And the Jane's here. Perfect. Okay, we're missing one Scourge Hook because I killed on it. The Hook will despawn indefinitely after you kill a Survivor on it. Oh, she has... Oh my god, that's insane value for Boil Over. Boil Over just does really well in the little doorways and such. We really going to get a Sabo? Do I get the Hook in time? I do. Okay, that was... Really bad for them. Well, she got out, did she? She did, like, the literal perfect pathing for me to not see what she's doing. Nice. Well, they're both using boil over. Okay, so it's probably, like, they intended to do a boil over Sabo build, I think. I was to guess. Okay, I don't see anybody coming up this lane to try and get saved, so I think they might try and sneak the Fang. They are, okay. Will they go on the far side? I'm intrigued. The Fang is going for the save, actually. All right, yeah, so they're most likely playing together. So I think if they weren't, I don't think this Fang ever goes for the save there. And then auras. So I don't, I'm not even guessing where they are with auras. I know exactly where they are. So I can use one blink there. Are they using breakdown as well? They are, okay. So this is actually really good because this is a scenario where the survivors have perks, like direct perks to counter my build. Breakdown is amazing against this build because it's just gonna slowly take out Scourge Hooks. And if you don't know, Breakdown removes a hook for three minutes, which is a ridiculous amount of time. And they have Sabo Toolboxes, so... They have direct perks to count on my build. I'm arguably on the worst map for Nurse, but you can still see just how good this build is. Okay, I'm surprised they didn't hold W away, but that's fine. So has been playing really stealthy. I don't think I have a single hook on her off the top of my head. I'm gonna just blink ahead. She's just gonna go for it, okay. Oh, she probably meant to pick up. That's unfortunate. Oh no, Michaela's death hook, okay. Fang's holding W. We get that, right? We do, nice, okay. Another reason why I love Campbell's, it catches so many survivors completely off guard. Yeah, and we're going into a hatch game with two gens left, but not only is it two gens, it's four. The four gens that I wanted to play at the start of the game. On a map like Larry's, they're probably gonna get the door because of how it's split. If you haven't seen the 500 wins video already, the rules for this streak, basically the survivors win or I lose if they complete all the five gens and then get an escape, whether it's hatch, whether it's a door. If they don't complete all five gens, then it does not count. Wow, what a guess. I, I, I eventually got to the point where I was like, well, whatever. We're not gonna, we're not gonna be able to monitor both gates. So I'll just check one of them. And it was exactly where the game was. We took a 50-50, but hey, we got lucky. Okay, we're in on RPD, which is one of the few maps where it's pretty difficult to get a quick start off of Lethal Pursuer if everybody spawns on the other side. Well, hello. Well, forget what I said. We still get a free hit just because the Claudette was a little bit oblivious. Where are we going? I'm sure we're about to go into the library, right? Nice. And literally just a simple prediction and we got it right. Perfect. And now is where we make our decision what side of the map we're playing. I think this side is fine. We know the rest of the survivors are here as well. Because we saw on lethal. They might be in lockers, you know. No? Well, they might be still. But there's a survivor here, so we'll just take that instead. Yeah! What? Why did that put me in the basement? Well, now I have no idea where the mag is. And this is so confusing. <laughs> Um, I could even go down for that survivor. Actually, no. We'll just take this. I'll just remember that there is a survivor on that gen. Double back. Sure. Give me another scourge. I'm not complaining. We'll go straight to that gen straight after as well and just see if they're still on it. Are they on it? No. They've got to be in one of these lockers, right? Oh, they're there. Okay, perfect. They haven't... Ooh, sprint burst. Okay. They have no idea I have floods either. They might do now because I kind of gave it away there. Normally, I like to play the other side of the map on this map, but they literally all spawned here, and I think the majority of my gens are here. It's just a bit unfortunate. He's here again, okay. Okay, apparently I've got to be careful of my blink, because last time I blinked over here, I just got sent into the basement. Hello, Meg. 
She didn't make much distance there. That's fine. Okay. She has a key as well. Good to know anyway. Keep that in mind. Get them off this gen so that we can pain res it. Yeah, I really dislike playing this side. Like, if you can, 99% of the time, it's way better to play the other side of this map as a nurse because it's just more open. But if you have to, then obviously playing this side of the map isn't the end of the world. And we're still spreading some pretty good pressure. Mm, I think going up here for the survivor, they're in the open anyway. And they're running to where I just have pressure. She's... Okay, she is dropping blood. She's just not leaving any scratches. Okay. Did she double back or did she get completely past me in time? She got right the way past me in time. No double back. Okay. Interesting. She's holding W, fair enough. I'm wondering if they have a boon up, honestly. Or if it's just lucky break. I think it might be a boon. Which again is interesting. We're playing against some really good perks. Against the nurse that we just happened to load into. Not too sure where though. That survivor has a sprint burst. They've not used it. Perfect. They double back. So we got a free hit. Um, I'm not going to blink until I get more info. There we go. Perfect. So that's a scourge as well. There we go. Now I'll just use this to get up and out. I have a feeling they might be saving the bottom hook first. Just because I heard a scream. But that honestly might be just because they have progress gens over here. I don't know about it. I think these survivors want to go next, which makes me think that the other two survivors are just on the other side of the map. Yeah. I think they might have been duoing that gen, honestly. And this is another good thing about RPD. Yeah. No one can get across here if I literally just stand here. Or, or not without it giving me some stuff for free. What are you doing? Oh, Claude, you're a bit... A little bit stuck there. And then we're in the end game, like, already. I saved that quick, okay. I mean, I guess that kind of makes sense. That whiffs. Unlucky. If I was on my second, Blink Heavy Panting would have helped me out there, but that's okay. I know the Claudette just ran at me, though. I don't really know why. Unless she has off the record, okay. And the Meg was up here, right? I think I saw her crouch by the pallet. Where did the Meg go? Yeah, this boon is actually giving a lot more problems than you would expect, but Shadow Step in general is just really good against the nurse. There we go. And again, this is another map where it's really hard to play the gates just because of how much they're split. Oh, pfft, as I say that. <laughs> you have a key. You could have used the key, Meg. Okay, and the, I think, third worst map, or the, just the map that I hate the most when I load into is Garden of Joy. I, I don't really know why, because this map is more open. It's just a bit of a terrible map. It's huge. The hitboxes were super scuffed. I don't know if they've managed to fix that anytime soon. And it has a pretty terrifying edge map that the survivors can run on you. All things, I think, which contribute to just not a great nurse map or just not a great map for killer in general. There we go. And we heard screams as well. And that was after that gem popped. So they're definitely working on other gens. I think the best thing to do on Garden of Joy is to use this house just as an advantage to be able to see them. Ace is just going to hold W. Okay. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, that's another thing. Like, a bush is just randomly here. Like, such a weird spawn. Which is one of the reasons why I, I dislike this map as well, is just how incredibly inconsistent it is. But, like, look at this edge map. Edge map is such a strong thing to run against Nurse in general on any map. And then you just have an edge map with walls and massive bushes everywhere. It makes it so much more difficult. Not the best Scourge spawn either. We've got really, really spread out Scourges. Which, I mean... It's good and bad. It means I'm most likely to be able to get to a Scourge every single time I down, but it also means I can't specifically play one area. Okay, and this was the most progress GN, and they do not have a lot of progress on it, so that's pretty good for us. They're over here. I can hear the footsteps. And another reason why this map just isn't that good for us is the main building is incredibly intricate. So there's just all of these little reasons which just stack up and stack up and stack up into making it just overall a not very good nurse map. But I still don't think it's as bad as RPD and Larry's because they can just be pretty awful. I think I make that. I do just, just because of heavy panting, I land that. There we go. Three hooks, three scourge hooks. They're not committing to this. This isn't close enough. Yeah, you could just see the bushes that are exclusive to this map. They're just littered everywhere. And if you've played Nurse at all, you can probably just see how that makes it a little bit more difficult, just having the line of sight blockers everywhere. Surprised that that wasn't the gen to regress. 
Yeah, it definitely means these survivors are being very aggressive on gens, which is slightly terrifying. I'm going inside the building now to try and get a better view. He expected me to wait out his dead hard like I did last time, but I instantly swung. So we caught him off guard. That's the beauty of this build. As long as if we're having quick enough chases and we're consistently hooking on scourges, we'll be just fine. The hardest part is being in a good area and getting the quick downs. I don't think this guy even saw me blinking onto him. And that was well played by him. A lot of survivors there, I think, would have just panic chucked down that power, but he didn't. Okay, they're up here. It's a drop down, so that's a free hit. Mm, can I one blink this? Maybe. Let's try it. Nice, we can. Okay, a little bit less wasted time. Can I get to a scar truck in time, though? That's a bigger question. All on the edge map, which is just really awkward. We don't have a single hook towards the center, which is normally what you want to play around. You want to find, like, one good hook and play around it. Ace fully healed. But that also means we don't have to worry about off the record or DS. I want to push him out this area because I hate how close the bushes are to the jungle gym. And I think it's going to make that chase really rough. Perfect. And heavy panting just allows us to wait that dead hard even longer. And I think we should be able to make it to this scourge. Yeah, I think we should be fine. There we go. And ace is gone. But I think one thing to notice is they had a really good start there. I say a really good start. In, in terms of any other killer that's not Nurse or maybe Blight, it was like a typical start. But Nurse is just so good at starting a game so, so fast. Damn, they got that gen done. Okay, hold on. Campbell's coming in clutch. He just held W. Yeah, this Felix is really smart. He's made a few good plays. Nice. Or maybe he's just trying to save pallets and it's throwing me off. But he's ran through pallets a few times and it's completely thrown me off. Okay, with agitation, I always get a hit there. I'm pretty happy just to take a normal hook. I don't know if that was to try and use an insta-heal or something, but it didn't work out, whatever it was. Nice, they got hatch. Well, that is three of Nurse's hardest maps with the new win streak build, and every single one was a pretty convincing win. But for sure, that is going to be the win streak build going forward. It's going to be streamed over on my Twitch, which is linked in the description. I'll be going live at random times on Twitch and just building up that streak more and more and just seeing what we can get it to. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.